given everyone's plugging into this talk and involved today, I'm assuming everyone understands the urgent need there is for sustainable products. Continuing as we are now or making small incremental changes, it's just not going to allow us to meet the sustainability goals we need to address the current climate crisis. We need to include sustainability at the core of all our product design decisions to make a real impact and move to where we need to be. We can need innovative solutions to get us out of this environmental crisis, some of which will directly address the environmental challenges, while others will be required to mitigate and reduce the impact of the products that people continue to purchase and use every day. Sustainable design processes will be required in both of these cases to create products that meet the definition of sustainable design, maximizing environmental, social, and economic benefits over the entire product life cycle, while minimizing associated social and environmental costs. This presentation is going to focus on the incorporation of environmental factors and costs into the product development process. Economic factors are already central to product design, with cost being a critical driving factor in all phases of the design process. Designers are becoming more aware of environmental factors, but in many cases, they're not well incorporated into the design process, but instead included as more of an afterthought, often when it's too late to make a real impact on the sustainability of the product itself. So I'm not going to discuss social factors here. There's clearly a need to incorporate the social impacts of a product into a sustainable design process to address social issues and inequity. And the triple bottom line principles are one way to, to address this, considering environmental, social and economic impacts in every decision you make. So a typical product development process focuses predominantly on the development of technology, taking it from initial product definition and concept development all the way through to manufacturing the final design. This process has many iterative loops as the designs are developed and decisions are made throughout that are going to influence the final design. In many more traditional product development processes, the primary factors that are considered at these decision-making points are related to the product cost, product features, time to market, and then the key technological risks and challenges. This often omits any sustainability considerations from the decision-making process unless they've been explicitly defined in the product requirements already. So this process I'm going to present here really puts sustainability at the core of these decisions. So sometimes we need to start people thinking about the product development process in a more balanced way and considering sustainability too. And one way to do this is to start with the idea of environmental costs. So they're already thinking of the economic costs and they can quantify those very easily. And the process I'm addressing looks at ways to quantify the environmental costs of a product, allowing us to make decision make decisions using quantified data. So this is the sustainable product development process I'm presenting today and I've worked on with some colleagues. It spans the full product development cycle from initial exploration of the problem, the product is trying to solve, and product definition discussions all the way through the iterative design process to realization of a final design. At the core of this process is the iterative measure, identify, apply cycle, which allows the environmental impact of designs to be quantified, hotspot areas of design that contribute, contribute significantly to its environmental impact highlighted, and then appropriate design strategies applied to reduce that impact. However, that iterative process is only applicable once there are design concepts in place. At early stages, a different approach is needed, allowing us to explore a broad range of solutions and really make the most of early stage innovation. This is where we should be using creative techniques to explore a broad solution set and consider the ways in which an, a solution to the problem your product is trying to solve could have the most positive environmental impact in an ideal case, not just the least negative impact. At this early stage, the opportunity for change is at its broadest, and the cost of making changes is at its smallest. So now it's time to explore all the options, no matter how out there they may seem. A little time invested here can massively influence the outcome of the design process. So it's critical to broaden the scope as wide as possible, consider all aspects of the system, all the product stakeholders, and the whole product life cycle to really stimulate the generation of ideas for business models and system architectures that achieve the goals of the product whilst having the least impact on the environment. It's a great time to have a circular economy mindset 
looking at how a system could achieve the desired outcome while moving away from the make, use, dispose model we so often see with consumer products nowadays. The most effective way to do this may be to move towards a more service-oriented business model, taking responsibility for any hardware through the whole life cycle and allowing for more efficient use of resources. An example of this is the Loop grocery delivery model, which recently come out in the US, where they provide household items in premium packaging, and then they take back that packaging in the next delivery to reuse, removing the waste of single-use packaging while providing an elevated customer experience that people are willing to pay a premium for. There are many different innovation techniques and tools that can be used at this early innovation stage, all of which allow for the generation of creative solutions to the defined problem, considering every stage of the product lifecycle and all product stakeholders. So once you've done that early stage innovation and you're working on developing design concepts, um, or even you've got a system architecture, this is when you want to start going into our measure, identify, apply iterative cycle. Once you've done the innovation um, process and you've got system architecture or a product concept, you want to then measure the environmental impact it has. So the way I'm proposing we do this in this design process is using life cycle assessment or LCA. This is a process where you can quantify the environmental impact of a design and also see the contributing factors to that impact. So the results in LCA are going to indicate which stage of the product life cycle is the most significant contributor to its environmental impact. And within that life cycle stage, which components and subsystems are the most significant contributors to that environmental impact. This allows for highlighting hotspots and then moving on into the future, you're going to be able to address these hotspots with design changes. So an example I've got pulled out here you can see that the materials and manufacturing are the biggest environmental impact of this product. And within that, it's the electronic subassembly that has the biggest um, environmental impact of all the different components. So this is the area you identify as where you want to work on in any design iterations moving forward. So this is where you apply strategies. This is the apply step of this iterative cycle. Here, Having identified the hotspots within design, you're going to apply relevant strategies to reduce the impact of those hotspots. At Synapse, we've pulled together a number of strategies that are relevant to the typical products we work on. We publish these in an ebook that's freely available and can be found on our website. Although the strategies that are most relevant to any given product are going to vary depending on the industry, the design, components used, this list of strategies is a great starting point to use as a reference as designs work to minimize the impact of any identified hotspots. So at this stage, you're going to make these design changes, apply them to the design, and then go back through the measure, identify, apply, iterative cycle again, allowing you to iterate the design, see how you've reduced the environmental impact, and continue to do that throughout the design process until you have a design that's mature enough to realize in a final product. And at this point, we're proposing that you want to do one final life cycle assessment, measure the environmental impact of your final design before you actually produce it. This benchmarks the performance of the product. You can even use it for any sustainability related labeling as well, such as carbon labeling. And it's also going to be a good benchmark for any future versions or models of this product. It gives you a baseline that you can work from and improve on improve on in the future. And then realizing design, although this is sort of outside the scope of any design process, this, you still need to follow through on the design decisions you've made, executing the decisions you've made to minimize the environmental impact. There's always challenges here. There's other pressures to put on to put on the release of the product. We've got competing priorities, eventually providing motivation to compromise on some of those decisions you've made for sustainability reasons. For example, you're shipping everything in and in your original plan, you're shipping everything by boat and you're minimizing the carbon emissions from that. But you get close to a deadline and you, and you consider air freighting everything in just to bring, bring in that deadline and meet your target delivery dates. The carbon emissions associated with that could outweigh so much of, those, of the reductions you've made in your design changes. So it's really where... Designers and engineers need to walk the walk and follow through on those design decisions they've made. 
That's the design process. That's one way in which sustainability can be incorporated into the product, de product development process. Using quantifiable metrics, along with innovation techniques to develop a sustainable product. I mean, there's still a lot of progress we made in this area as our understanding improves and the tools available to us have developed further. These processes will evolve along with them. I do believe it's critical. There is a process in place to ensure sustainability is considered in product development in a robust way. And it's not just tagged on as an afterthought. I look forward to seeing how innovative designers and companies continue to develop products and work towards sustainable solutions. Thanks very much.